All right. Does anyone have a question? To, oh, there we go. Patricia has a question. Okay, question. Do you think once a cheater, always a cheater? Thank you. Stay salty. By the way, I have I have a son in heaven this month this is the 22nd anniversary of his death. Oh, my heart goes out to you, Patricia. You know, interestingly enough, I spoke to a woman today who lost her son, um, gosh, about um, nine, 10 months ago, and her son's name is Connor. In fact, interestingly enough, um, when my son Connor passed away, I had another friend whose son named Connor passed away. So I'm almost inviting people not to name their children Connor. I am truly sorry about what you've experienced. So coming back to once a cheater, always a cheater. I do not subscribe that once a cheater, always a cheater, just like I don't subscribe. If you've lied once, you're a liar. If you if you've broken the law once, does that make you a criminal? I don't believe I don't subscribe to that, folks. I have said white lies in my life. I think I've actually lied in my life. Does that make me a liar? No, I have lied. Have I have I broken the speed limit and broken the law? Yes. Does that make me a criminal? I maybe I don't know. Here's the thing about cheating. It takes two to tango. And what I mean to say is unless someone has a sex addiction, most of the time people cheat because there's a lack of intimacy in the relationship. There's a lack of oral sex in the relationship. And what I mean is talking and listening your way to a passionate relationship. So there's usually a breakdown in intimacy that causes someone to seek intimacy elsewhere because it's oftentimes not the act of intercourse, it's the act of connecting with another human being. And most couples that have taken each other for granted or lack erotic connection, that's where people cheat. And men and women alike cheat. You know, it's, by the way, I've heard now women cheat more than men. Now, I'm not saying that's true. I heard that from someone recently that recited a statistic. But I highly recommend checking out the work of, of Esther Perel. She wrote the book called Mating in Captivity, Mating in Captivity. And why I recommend this book is she talks about erotic connection. And one of the challenges in most relationships today is they've lost that erotic connection with one another. And erotic is more about the, the sensuality of the mind as well as the body. Yes, there are people that are sex addict that cheat. But most of the time when someone is unfaithful, it's because there's something lacking in the relationship. Now, if they pick another relationship and they're in the same boat, yes, it could happen again. But if that intimacy is filled for both of them, then I don't believe it has to happen again. So uh, once a cheater, always a cheater. Well, I guess if once a liar, always a liar, that basically means every politician is a liar, every human being's a liar, every doctor's a liar, every policeman's a liar. I don't care what you say. If, if we're gonna base things on that, then everybody is a cheater and a liar and a, a criminal. Okay. So that's my take on that. Thank you so much for that question, Patricia. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Cheating is a choice. Don't overthink it. Forgive them, but you don't have to take them back. People can change, but a person doesn't. Oh, okay, so another good point about this. Um, my, here, hold on everybody. I, hopefully, do I have the book? Do I have the book here? Oh, darn it. Hold on everyone. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where is it, where is it? All right, so here's a book. Coming back to the cheating question, not that I wanna spend all time cheating, but I did post a question earlier. So my ex-girlfriend wrote a book called Chatting or Cheating. By the way, there's a picture of Sherry. Uh, by the way, I ran into her at the wedding that I went at uh, this past weekend, got to break bread with her and her, uh, her partner. Uh, she's been uh, in a relationship with a great guy for the last four years, but she wrote a book called Chatting or Cheating. And what it says is how to detect infidelity, rebuild love, and affair-proof your relationship. I'm going to tell you something. The last half of this book is a brilliant blueprint, a brilliant blueprint for creating a relationship that you can become affair-proof. And I highly recommend checking out Sherry's book. By the way, uh, in the description, there's a link to Jonathan Recommends book, so you can get a copy of Sherry's book. This is a great book to understand what causes infidelity, what are some of the signs, and how to avoid it. And like she says, a fair proof your relationship. And by the way, since most of you will ask, we ended our relationship uh, went as far as it could because we weren't really a great match from a long term. We were there to heal one another. 
we did i don't think we consciously went into this but the gratitude we express for one another these days is because we really needed healing and folks a lot of your relationships that you've had in your life are opportunities for you to heal to heal that's what relationships do they're great opportunities to heal it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to go the distance with them so um i'm here to say that even though i was in a relationship that i'm very grateful for we weren't meant to go the long term but we sure had a great ride and we have now we treat each other like family not friends we treat each other like family and i'm literally friends with her partner and we're going to play golf together actually really soon so anyway i just wanted to share that thank you so much all right um margaret says